This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treats and Sakura Co. We'll dive into what's inside this month's box after the video. And trust me, you would not want to miss this. Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rosmo. Welcome to the series where I talk about hidden gem of movies or movies that should be hidden and buried within time. But with this movie I'll be talking about today, oh boy, it's definitely part of the latter. Today's ever heard of episode, sweeties, is going to be about Valiant, requested by my patron Cross, who is in the button tier in my patron where they can choose what movie I review and I have no choice but to cover it. And oh my gosh, if this wasn't requested, I would never have been able to finish this movie, but I stuck through it so that you won't have to. Let's talk about it. Valiant is a 2005 animated movie produced by Vanguard Animations, Ealing Studios, and Odyssey Entertainment, and was released by Walt Disney in the US. Now this review will have spoilers, and I advise you not to watch the movie. Do not watch it. I sat through an hour and 15 minutes of absolute nothing so that you don't have to. And don't worry, I'll give you a recap of the movie and it's no trouble at all because of how this movie is framed. You'll see what I mean later. So Valiant is about a small pigeon who wants to join the military because he, and I quote, wants to do his bit. So he joins to be part of the military of birds who send important messages in the war. And no, it's not the birds war. This movie is set during World War II where carrier pigeons were actually used to send messages to and fro. The open sequence shows some of the birds already serving their country out on the field and dying. And the report says that no birds came back even though they were the best flyers. So the military was in need of new recruits. Valiant saw the commercial and all the people fawning over the military dudes in the diner he was in and he decided decided to join. So while Valiant goes to enlist, we get introduced to this sticky street con pigeon who bamboozled two other pigeons and ran off with Valiant to enlist so that he can run away from the pigeons that he just tricked. So Valiant wasn't allowed in because he's short, but con pigeon stinky man who is also named Bugsy, he helped Valiant out by tricking them into thinking that Valiant was friends with Commander Gutsy. One of the birds who was being fawned over at the diner, the enlisting pigeon guy gets tricked and they are both enlisted now. Bugsy tries to run off but oop, lie in the bed you made Bugsy, he's gonna be part of the military now. When they get to the training camp, they meet three other birds, two brothers named Tailfeather and Toughwood, and a tall red bird named Lofty. I'll be honest, I completely forgot this introduction even happened because right after this scene they were shoved right back in the background either that or there was nothing notable or funny about them so i kind of forgot about them anyway they get trained they sleep in a dumpster where bugsy feels at home oh and i forgot to mention while all of this was happening we get cutscenes of the villain trying to get information out of the military top flyers that he captured in the opening scene this whole thing of him sitting somewhere listening to this dude ramble on about not wanting to spill the beans but get drugged and then he ultimately spills the beans. Anyway, going back to the trainees, we get a little subplot of Valiant and the nurse falling in love with each other, which I think is pretty boring because it doesn't amount to anything in the whole plot to be honest. Then finally, after days of training, these raggedy ass birds get to fly with the top flyer to assist him. The villain still isn't doing anything but listening to this ding dong this whole time. Nothing really important again. So, one night before they set off on the field, Bugsy tries to leave because come on. They're basically the Suicide Squad, except they're not a squad. And yeah, without plot armor, these birds are just gonna get KFC'd instantly. Anyway, Valiant says he's staying and Bugsy respects it and offers a handshake. But this idiot of a future chicken nugget refuses to even shake his hand. They're lucky to have you, mate. Anyway. The others wake up and their reactions were genuine, like they really didn't want Bugsy to leave. Farewell. Alright, wait, where are you going? You can't just leave, Bugsy. <sighs> Look, I've got urgent business to take care of and... Uh, look, I, I better catch the wind while it's blowing. I felt sympathy and sadness for this scene of the gang having to lose Bugsy. If there was even a gang to begin with! This was the second time I felt like these group of birds actually talked to each other and not just bland cardboard cutouts. The first one was when they were being taught how to discern friend or foe in the heat of battle. Yes, yes. Friend or foe! Friend! Friend! Oh yes, my friend! Oh! 
99. That's not even a scene of them interacting. It's just a funny scene, but them having the same reaction makes it look like they're vibing with each other. Then they finally get to go on the field, but before they leave, Bugsy suddenly joins in and is ready to join the battle. Instantly. I kid you not, after this scene where he left, it was this scene right after. Not even a scene of Bugsy alone contemplating if he did the right thing. No, I guess his realization was just off screen. <laughs> Amazing, huh? So they're gonna drop in a box, but Commander Gutsy's parachute box is stuck. Valiant offers help, but Gutsy orders him to leave without him, and he died. Nope, okay, now he died. So now without a commander, they find a place to hide, then think of a plan. Then they meet this rat named Charlie the Girl. That's literally her name. She said she's named the Girl because she is a girl. Along with this rat girl, she's also with Rolio, Rolo, a possible unstable rat who likes to set things on fire. He's basically that one chef from Ratatouille who likes arson, but in rat form. The girl leads them to a place where her comrades are staying and they get chased by some falcons on the way there, which here actually lets Lofty show off a bit of character, where he navigates flying well enough and work together with the girl. I am going to get you! <laughs> Oh. Hold on, my dear. But then we never get to see a glimpse of characterization after that for Lofty. Poor boy. Bugsy volunteers to carry the very secret important message for the mission then. So when they start the plan, the other three birds distract the falcons while Bugsy and Valiant deliver the message. Where Valiant gets caught and Bugsy saves him. But then he gets caught. And let's be real here, ladies and gents. If anyone were to be captured, Bugsy should have been the last one out of everyone. Because he has the message. So then Bugsy gets caged with the previous top flyers and the villain takes a Bath. So let's backtrack a bit and see what the villain in the story did so far, alright? So first off, he had a little chat with this prisoner, plays some polka music, and then takes a bath and prepare for dinner, which in this case is Bugsy. So Valiant preps up for a rescue mission, and it seems that their commander Gutsy was actually alive and not dead. <laughs> like I care! Valiant gets the letter but wants to save Bugsy too, so Valiant swallows the message, saves Bugsy, and we get a climax of the movie with this chase scene of Valiant versus the Falcon. Valiant escapes his grasps, delivers the saliva-drenched letter, and he becomes the hero he always wanted to be, and got the nurse lady. Okay. Goodness me, are you still there? Just checking if you're still here and not bored out of your mind because that's what happened to me in this movie. No sugarcoating, this movie is bad. It's not because it's an old movie, no no no, Valiant came out on 2005. That's the same year as Corpse Bride, Madagascar, Robots, even Krunk's New Groove and Chicken Little and I'd watch both of those movies a hundred times if it means not watching Valiant anymore. This movie seems like it got ripped out of the children's book and into motion picture film, literally. Every scene we we get plot after plot with no characterization and even with the attempt of fleshing out the characters in this movie, it fails flat because it's either they're bland or not funny or they don't interact with anyone around them in a natural organic way. I say that it's full of plot beats after plot beat, but even telling the story isn't good. Half of the time, I was wondering what's happening because it wasn't explained properly. When they meet up with the mouse, I didn't know they were going to get the message in the rat's hideout. I just thought they were being chased and that's it. I mentioned earlier that it seems like a children's book in movie form, but in a bad way. In children's storybook, we get the progression of the story and it's simple because you don't need to give characters a fleshed out personality. But for a full length movie, you gotta flesh out your character, especially the main character since we need to care about him and his goals. But I honestly did not care about Valiant at all. The character I probably cared about in this movie the most is Lofty. And that says a lot because he's basically town person A in this movie. Their names were supposed to be easy to remember, but they barely interact with each other or call them by their name, so I don't know their names until the end of the movie. <laughs> oh, and you might tell me, oh, Rosmo, you probably weren't paying attention to the dialogue. And to that, I reply, I had stuck my eyes on the screen even when I wanted to grab my phone. Take a nap or draw Pengu for the 90th time. Anything but this. But I still kept watching and paying attention because I want to give this movie a chance. It did not deserve the chance. 
This movie just dragged on for way too long. The romance subplot with the nurse had no purpose for the story. Did it help Valiant get courage to continue on? Nope. Did he think of the nurse so that it'll help him survive a tough situation? Nope. She is just there to give Valiant the girl when he saves the day. Also, the villain subplot was unnecessary as well. There were way too many cuts of this falcon talking to this guy who doesn't snitch and kept his mouth shut only for the falcon to take a bath. And it's weird that he lost after the commander mentioned him being so fast and five times the size of every pigeon's wingspan, and he lost to Valiant. Some of you guys probably grew up with this movie, but I didn't, so we probably have different views and opinions when it comes to this movie, but I don't think even nostalgia can save this glob forsaken film to make it interesting. But that's why I invited a good friend of mine to suffer with me. Meet RJ. She's a streamer friend of mine who actually grew up watching Valiant. Whoa, could it be me? So let's see if Valiant can stand the test of time through the eyes of nostalgia. Take it away, RJ. Hi guys, what is up? It is me, RJ. Like Rosmo said, this movie had a spot in my childhood. I know for a fact that I watched it several times, but until my recent watch through for this video, I couldn't remember hardly anything about it. I remembered there was a pigeon named Valiant, and he went off to go do something, but that was it. Well, after rewatching it for the first time in several, several years, it became painfully apparent why nothing stuck. I have some notes. After my rewatch, I think my main gripe with this movie is the fact that not a single character had more than one dimension. We have Valiant, our main protagonist, who is simply brave. Bugsy almost had a moment when he decided to run away, only for it to be speed ran in literally the next scene where he changes his mind. Nothing else can really be said about the remaining characters. What you see is what you get. The plot kind of just existed. Every plot point simply just happened. I thought Valiant might struggle to join the military and have a bit of a Steve Rogers moment. Nope, he gets in no problem. I thought Valiant would struggle with the rigorous military training, maybe have a Mulan style breakthrough. Nah, doesn't grow stronger, doesn't struggle with a single moment of wavering. Then they get deployed in Gutsy's parachute jams. I'm gonna say that again. Gutsy's parachute jams. He's a bird. He can fly out of the plane. It would be safer to fly out of the plane than to deploy in huge slow parachutes. So Gutsy's dead. Oh wait, no he isn't. Look, he's back. I'm not gonna lie, I 100% expected him to be a double agent working for the Falcons. I just couldn't believe that anyone could come up with a character so perfect and boring. But no, he came a hero. He left a hero. And that's that. Oh, and there was a romance plotline. I guess. This movie is an enigma to me, because clearly something about it grabbed me as a kid. The best I can say about it is that, even though the story wasn't anything to write home about, it was paced decently well, and the climax had a good amount of tension that I wouldn't have expected had I not had some memory of the movie prior. I'll also say it was inoffensive, at least. But that's about as much as I can say about it. All in all, it was a disappointing rewatch, and I'm ashamed of my childhood self for giving it more than one watch through. Now, back to you, Rosmo. Thanks, RJ. You guys should check out RJ on Twitch. She makes and rigs live 2D models. Links to her in the description. Let's move on to the animation. I'll be real with you guys, I don't think it's that bad. The only thing I think I didn't like was the way the flying was animated, but I think that's because of the character designs of them having wings smaller than their bodies. But all in all, the animation looks pretty decent. It's it's not that good, but it certainly isn't bad. They're also very expressive in body language when they move since they are limited to bird faces and beaks, and this is especially apparent when Bugsy is the main focus of the scene, or when he's talking. Now let's talk about the characters. Valiant, I'll be honest, is pretty bland. No, he's really bland. Nothing redeeming about him at all. They make his character say things that'll make him look like someone who cares for his country and wants to do his part, but is framed as someone who wants to prove something for himself, be the cool guy he admired in the diner and finally gets noticed. And it would have been great if that was his whole art, for him to get recognition he wants that he just doesn't get because he's small. That's a good motivation for the character, but no, he just keeps repeating that he wants to do his part. Also, Valiant was voiced by Yuan McGregor. There, I fixed my pronunciation of his name, are you guys happy? Unlike the Robots review, where Yuan also voiced the main character who isn't the flat generic dreamer protagonist, in this case, he was. Valiant gives up the, uh, no matter what, I'll be able to reach my dreams. But instead of us actually knowing what it is, we toggle from a selfless goal of serving his country to something as self-centered as proving he's good enough and getting fond over. The latter sounds like a bad thing, but I assure you it's not since it's still a good motivation for any character. But 
but the movie needs to choose one for Valiant. They can't just say he wants the first one and then showcase how much he wants the latter option. Then we got Bugsy, who I know is supposed to be the comic relief and the best friend character, and I'll be honest, the shy naive dude with a confident con man best friend would have been a great dynamic if done well, but it wasn't. Bugsy didn't have any funny interactions if I'm being honest. Even his fart jokes fell flat. Fart jokes! The twins really didn't show any character in this movie aside from being the goofy siblings. Lofty was boring, other than that one scene I mentioned before where we got a glimpse of him being a good flyer. Now that I think about it, it would have been great if each bird had a specialty. Like the twins would be good at teamwork or flying with each other than Solo, Valiant would be the fastest one cause he's small, and Bugsy would be the wittiest of all of them. And Lofty would be the excellent Solo flyer and good at navigation. But alas, we can only dream of that reality that is not ours. The nurse is absolutely unnecessary, and it's not because she's the love interest plot device. I think you guys get the impression of me that any sort of romance in a non-romance movie I dislike, but no, that's not the case at all. It's just jarring to watch the movie that's already dragging enough, adds a character as a love interest, and does nothing with it. It could have helped flesh out Valiant's character more, too, since he could open up to her and, and express his motivations more clearly and essentially just more to the audience. But nope, she ended up being the obligatory love interest in the romance subplot that every movie thinks they need. Von Talon was the main antagonist of the movie and he didn't do anything for almost all of the movie. For the first half, he's just sitting trying to get info out of this bird and it would have been great if it was just one scene and then he went on to do some other plans of his. But no, even after that, Bugsy just landed into his hands because of one of his goons and he took a bath. He could have just ripped the message then and there and he would have won or flew it to his boss since he is a falcon and surely faster than any pigeon. But no, <laughs> <laughs> it's bath time! All in all, this movie is bad. I don't care if you valiant bird supporters think that I am wrong and everything I said is biased, but I really don't think this movie is good. But then again, if you do like this movie because of nostalgia, then that's great. That would mean this movie was magical for some of you as a kid. The premise of this movie itself was good and interesting, but the execution was just not it, guys. I never want to watch this movie again, and I felt the life draining away from me when I was watching it. It's so boring! So do I recommend you to watch this movie? Heck no! Honestly, after everything I said, if you decide you still want to watch it, then go ahead. I won't stop you, even though I would love to stop you. Before I spoil what the next movie reviews are going to be about, let's talk about today's sponsor, which includes cute boxes and yummy foods. This video sponsor is Tokyo Treats and Sakurako. Tokyo Treats and Sakurako are both subscription boxes that deliver exclusive Japanese treats right to your doorstep. But the difference is that Tokyo Treats provides modern and seasonal snacks while Sakurako focuses on more traditional Japanese snacks. In the box, you can see the booklet right out of the bat to show you the treats you got if you can't read Japanese like me, and even show you the ingredients and common allergens so you know exactly what you got. Tokyo Dream's theme this month is Summer Matsuri. Piled high with the most exclusive and flavorful snacks Japan's summer festival has to offer. My favorite from this box is definitely the Pucky Vanilla Salt and the Sentochi Lemon Salt Senbei. Gosh, they are so good! Sakura Coast partnering with the Kanagawa government and local snack makers to introduce traditional Yokohama delights in the special Yokohama box design. I absolutely loved the Bikkuri Dorayaki and the Peanut Macarons. I felt like that rat from Ratatouille Toot where the flavors blend in my mouth. Yeah, that's what happened when I ate these two yummy delights. If you want to try the box and support the channel while doing it, you can use this promo code to get $5 off of your first purchase on Sakurako or Tokyo Treats boxes using the links provided in the description as well. You're legit missing out if you missed this month's theme because they are amazing. The next movie is going to be about... Ta-da! So yeah, big thanks to my patrons. And of course, I'm going to give a shout out to my butternut tier patrons. Jacob K, Kao Chua, Christian V, and Cross. Also, I'm surprised, but there is a meme tier on my Patreon page because my patrons have a channel on Discord where we can chat. And it led to me opening a tier called Dill Pickles. And shout outs to the mad lad who actually pledged there. Shout outs to Epic Knight. You are a pleasant surprise. 